What is up? I am Miguel Antonio, and this is the Live and Create Podcast. It's where I talk to artists and entrepreneurs about what it means to live a great life and create great things. On this episode, we have the Royal Chief. He's a rapper and producer, and he shares his story moving from Atlanta to Kansas City to work to establish a community around his own rap career. Some of the highlights are where we talk about the concept of preparing for the worst, yet working for the best. We talk about side hustles, and we talk about a really, really important concept for a lot of people is that your story does not end in your 20s. That even as an artist or an entrepreneur or both, that you have a whole lot of life left and a whole lot to offer other people. I hope you guys enjoy the episode. The Live and Create Podcast. Well, dude, thanks for making the time. Now, are you typically, are you a early person or a late person as far as artists go? Um, I prefer the earlier the better. I like like okay. waking up, getting right in. Like, I don't, I don't like to be out there all laid back because I mess around and get sleepy. And... <laughs> right on, man. Yeah, the I, my old bass player, we joke because I like to get up at like 4.35 in the morning typically, and yeah. he usually is going to bed at 4 35 in the morning so when we would tour it was just it, it was kind of it was strange to to figure out stuff but it, it ended up working out because i would take first driving shift and he would just crawl back into the van and just sleep like for about four or five hours and then i'd be ready to take a nap after that so it's Great. good to meet a fellow uh early artist there's, yeah. there's not as many of them i know no everybody always wants to it's so funny because everybody always like wants to uh, go on that whole oh late night grind and you know I'm getting it everybody sleeping I'm like but you're asleep and like <laughs> while we're at work like it's all the no, same I, I feel you and I, I like last night I had a late night because I was wrapping up a whole bunch of editing uh, but it, it wasn't like creative work it was like real like detail like click this compress this move it on like I I'd rather write in the morning, do everything in the morning. So, so I feel you, man. So, man, uh, one, we've known each other since the hot wing challenge. Yeah. Yeah. That we did what's a while back. And, uh, but yeah. then you, you kind of got back on my radar. I, I got back on Twitter and, uh, saw this video you put out and man, I gotta say that video is phenomenal. I was actually just showing my son. Uh, he's a huge rap fan. And it was funny cause I showed him and he goes, Oh wait, I've seen this video already on Facebook. So your marketing's working. Uh, oh. cause <laughs> it's, it's re reaching the right fan bases out there, but man, yeah. that, that was incredible. Um, what, what was the name of that song again? In the name of the video? Uh, uh, it's called keep that. And, and who was the director on that? Cause that was, that's some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's one of my good friends. His name is uh, Tay Tay. Nice. First name, same name. <laughs> He's, uh, now, man. what inspired that for you guys? The the whole dynamic with the poker playing, and then you being on top of the poker chips, and kind of that the the Trump kind of representation. I think it was in there. Right. Where where did all that inspiration come from? Um, well, first when we kind of came to the table, we were just trying to do something um, something simple and easy because we were uh he was he, he's based in oakland and so he was only in town for like two weeks and then i had to leave that week so it was like let's see what we can get done you know just in a week and so we just kind of were you know mulling over the ideas and throwing things out there like i said trying to keep it simple um and so we kind of just came up with this concept well let's you know have like some kind of poker game it's like we can just get a table you know like dim all the lights around us and um, initially, we were going to have, like, several other people at the table. Um, but, like, you know, with the whole pandemic going on and everything, I was just like, you know what? I don't want to have a bunch of people over here who fuck around. And and, <laughs> and everybody gets sick and half of us die. It's No I'm one wants like, that. Let's just, um, let's just have it, you know, a game versus me and Trump. And, like, we're playing for the stakes of America right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially, like election year because we shot it you know before uh the election and before the results and everything so it's just like let's you know have the the kind of stakes for america going on right here i love it man yeah i love that that's a simple you you said you want to do something simple and watching it i was like man this must have taken weeks to to prepare and get everything together that's cool uh, 
We 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 only actually shot for maybe three days. Okay. But yeah, we just kind of took that week and we're we're piecing it all together, coming up with ideas. We spent, uh, I think we spent about a day, a day or two, um, just doing like test shots and seeing what right. you know what would work. Um, and like I said, we, we, we made it happen. And then, you know, like on the chips and everything, you know, we went and rented a green screen and just, you know, just to add some, some fun in there. Cause uh, I hadn't really shot anything. Like most of my videos are always get a little bit more serious. Uh, so, you know, let's just kind of do something fun. It's entertaining. Like, you know, nothing, nothing heavy. Right. Well, what was cool is it is funny and engaging, but it also seemed to have some undertones of seriousness, which, when you can merge that, I think makes some powerful art. For sure, I for sure. It. Yeah, and that's why I was so excited about them. Just like you know, we're able to like you know have a little a little thought behind it, but you know, still be engaged and entertaining, and and you know, some cool people could enjoy. Right now, you uh, I was reading a little bit of your bio. You're originally Kansas City, right? And mm -hmm. then I think you were you went down to Texas for a while came back to Kansas City, you were out in Atlanta for a while, if I'm not mistaken, and then found yourself back here. Is that, am I kind of getting the the traveling, oh. touring thing going on there? When I lived in Texas, I was like a little kid. So I, I mean, I was there, but I don't really count it. I didn't know, know nothing, but, uh, but I did. <laughs> I did live in uh, Texas for two years and then uh, came back here and then I moved to Atlanta when I was 20. Okay. Now, is that the first step for you as an artist, like getting out into Atlanta, trying to grow things? I think it was um, it was probably the first step for me taking it really serious. Um, I, I'd always, you know, I've been I've been writing and uh, rapping, recording since I was about 13, 14. Okay. Um, it's kind of something I love to do, you know, kind of like a hobby. And then like around, you know, high school, you know, you're getting the graduation and, you know, you're talking to all the counselors and they're all on this whole, you know, what college you're going to pick, you know, what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I came to my mom and I was just like, you know, um, I just want to rap. I don't really want like, to, I don't feel like I can gain everything I need to outside of college. I don't have to go there. You know, I don't want to be in a bunch of debt and kind of feel like, you know, wasting years away when I could be you know, somewhere gaining the experience I would need or, you know, learning the things I would need. And, uh, you know, she wasn't happy about that, but. <laughs> <laughs> so there well, wasn't a lot of support in that realm. No, the, She's like, get your ass to college, man. And she's just like, you know, uh, well, I don't, I don't understand here. Um, and you know, like I, and I had like, they had this little scholarship program. So I had like two years of college free and I was just like, ah, no, I'm good on it. And she, yeah, so she was peace yeah. out to that. Yeah, I was just like, you know, I'd rather, you know, focus on this, you know, as opposed to, to going to school and feed my time into something that I wasn't interested in, you know, especially like those early years doing a bunch of prerequisites and whatnot. I was just like, I'd rather, you know, focus on what I really want to do. So, yeah. I dig so that. My first, like, this is really what I'm doing for life. That's awesome. My uh, drummer in my last band, uh, I think you you might remember Daniel Cole. He's in like half the bands in Kansas City, I think right now. But uh, we always talked about that because we both went and got our music degree. And sorry, mm -hmm. pouring some coffee here and I just spilt some on my desk. But um, we got our music degrees and we, we have a shit ton of debt. Mm -hmm. And one of our main conversations on the road was typically like, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I would have just taken private lessons, maybe did like a minor in business or a minor in marketing, something like more tangible, like skills, so I could get out there and if I needed to get a side hustle, I could do that. And so it's cool to hear that's a choice you made on your own. There's, there's a lot of folks that I've encouraged, like younger artists, where I'm like, if you really want to tour and do this, I would not strap yourself down with a ton of debt. So that's cool. For sure. Now, yeah. when did, I'm assuming your mom supports you in your endeavors at this point now, is there, where was the point that she came around to help say like, okay, I'm with you, I'm supporting you? Um, it was when I, when I actually, uh, like, she, she was always kind of a little bit in, you know, like I, you know, I had my older brother who was really supporting me and, you know, he had played with some of my stuff and whatnot and, and, you know, she was kind of, Okay, and then like when I really decided to move to Atlanta, I think that's kind of, you know, like 
when it ticked, it was like, okay, he's really doing this. So either I'm going to get behind this or, you know, I'm just going to be upset. That's cool. She's, she's like, okay, he's, he's going all in. I better support him. And, and I'm probably hearing that, that whole idea that like when you hear the music and it's actually good. Right. It's like, okay, my son has something here. Uh, um, that's my wife often tells me, cause I'm like, you're crazy that you support me the way you do. She goes, listen, if you weren't good, I'd tell you, I really would. And there's times I've, I've even performed and she was like, eh, it wasn't your best night. <laughs> <laughs> but but she's like I I hear in that and see in that when people see that you're good they're willing to get, to get behind you. So in well, Atlanta, how long were you in Atlanta? Uh, I was there for five years. What are what are some of the big takeaways uh, in those five years for you? Like they had to boil it down to like maybe two three lessons. Um, I I always say the biggest takeaway I took was that networking is bigger than talent or anything else like hmm. being able to talk to people and get yourself in rooms or in places with people is going to be the biggest thing whether it's you being able to you know do that or you've got somebody who's you know can speak for you or vouch for you but just being able to get out there and talk to people and get yourself in rooms and in places you might not be in you know whether however you miss it I, I think that's the biggest thing man I, I see so many people who are like crazy talented and you know, or sick and can, you know, rap or produce or just do whatever, but they, they don't know how to be social. They don't know how to get their stuff out there. You know, they're kind of just to themselves. And I'm just like, I mean, if you want to have like success in the music business, man, you gotta, you gotta either be a networker or you gotta have somebody who can be the mouthpiece for you. Right. Like a good manager, something who's hustling behind the scenes for you. For, for sure. But yeah, networking was the, the biggest thing I learned down there. Um, I always feel like Atlanta taught me like how to make music. You know, before I got down, you know, just rapping, it was just like, I go in here and it's like, I'm just going to write a 16 and, you know, then I'll come over the course. But like down there, I really learned like, you know, a lot more melodic, you know, things, um, structure, you know, how to mm -hmm. actually songs, intros, outros, you know, bridge, like just all the little intricacies of songwriting that you never think about whenever you're, you know, you're there until somebody kind of makes you aware of it. Right. Like it moves beyond just like emotion poured out to where you're really putting a craft and a product together. It sounds yeah, like. For sure. So, yeah, that, that was networking and just how to make music, how to make songs was, was some of the, the biggest lessons I learned down there. That's awesome. Now, five years there and you decide to come back home uh, to mm -hmm. Kansas City. And I thought it was unique where just even hearing the story that you took the Royals and the Chiefs, put it together uh, for your name, having a lot of home time, hometown pride. What, what was it? Was there a moment you're in Atlanta, like, I need to go back home? Uh, what, what drove you to come back home to Kansas City? Yeah, I was just kind of, you know, looking around at, at Atlanta, and Atlanta's, man, is, is thriving. Like, the, the reason Atlanta is what it is is because they've all, they're all behind each other, like, you know, there was um, there's always that infamous um, clip of Andre 3000 saying the South got something to say, you know, at the Source Awards back in the 90s. And like from there on, it's it's been rolling ever since for them. And that's just because they're they're all in on each other. You know, and I was just kind of I'm just like, man, whenever it's somebody's turn there, like they're all behind it. Like they're all supporting. They're all putting their efforts behind each other and trying to see each other blow up. And it's like. Even if I'm not going to be the biggest star in the world, I'm going to be a huge star in Atlanta if I'm from Atlanta, you know, and if I'm awesome. putting effort. And so I just, I came back with that in mind. Like, I, I, I want to get my city, you know what I'm saying? I want to have, you know, a fan base here at home um, and just bring, you know, those, those things I, I learned down there and bring them here and just provide some structure here. Nice, man. And how long have you been here in KC? Oh, I've been back since 2017, so three years. Okay, so when we did that that show together, the Wings Challenge and the show, that was pretty early on. You were back here yeah. in Kansas City. That's yeah. awesome, man. How how has it been for you stepping back into Kansas City and trying to build up this idea of community? Have, has it been met with a lot of great response? Is it a struggle? Is it all of it? Um, it's, uh, I feel like it's been met with a lot of great response. I think, I think the, uh, specifically like the hip hop scene here is a lot different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, 
know, there's a lot more community here now. Like you got a lot, a lot more artists who are, you know, we all kind of want to meet each other and collaborate and support each other. And it, it didn't used to be that way. Hmm. Um, and it was, it's funny because I left so early. I said, I left when I was 20. So when I came back, I almost I, I, like come back as a new person. It's like, people don't like know I'm from here because like people are just kind of, I've never seen you before. It's like, I mean, <laughs> I was, you know, like 20, like I, I wasn't here, you know, to kind of establish any relationships with people, you know, who were who were getting it at the time here. Right. And so I've come back like as a, a whole new guy who just popped up on the scene. But it's it's been good, man. It's been it's been good. There's a lot of, you know, collaborating and just meeting other artists and linking with guys. And it's the reception has been well from everybody, man. And some dope people here. That's awesome, man. I don't know much about the hip hop scene here in Kansas City, obviously more in the rock realm uh, and pop realm. Uh, but even really this last year, it seems like so many things just getting shut down made it that much harder for you as an artist in 2020 pandemic life. Uh, yeah. What does that look like for you in, in staying in touch with this community and in, in creating and performing? Yeah, it's um, it's been weird because, you know, especially as as independent artists, like touring is kind of, you know our thing, our way to get out kind of a there, big deal. make money. Yeah, like it's it's a huge thing. You're touring, touring merchandise, all of that. So not having that, you know, it's kind of a big setback. I, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of taking it as a time to sit back, you know, reflect, try things musically, um, you know, just to think, man. I, I feel like the pandemic has been a time for everybody to just maybe take a step back, you know, like a little of that. I've always felt like the world kind of gives you some anxiety, you know, just being out there and you're looking around, especially with social media, you get real anxious with social yeah. media. You know, it'll, you, you get to those points where you're like kind of comparing yourself to people and seeing that other people are doing and, you know, it's this, mm. kind of this false sense um, of anxiety and, you know, everybody just kind of slowed down and we all got dead. And I, I think it was a chance for everybody to just breathe. Yeah. Uh, you know, in some cases, you know, there's some people who may be dealing with some other struggles, you know, in the pandemic, but, for me personally, it was just a second to pause, mm. you know, take a breath and kind of collect my thoughts and collect myself. What is that? And from a practical standpoint, um, like, for example, for me this past year, uh, it definitely was that uh, putting a pause on a lot of things. Uh, mm -hmm. It, you know, I'm Mary got four kids and we, we spent so much time together. Like even right now, I'm down in my studio, all four boys are upstairs doing virtual school. My wife's there with them. <laughs> you know, we, we have so much more time together. So that's been refreshing and a great learning for myself. But then also meditation has, has been a thing. It's, it's been a thing in and out of my life, but spending mm -hmm. time this year, just trying to meditate more just for a sense of peace and calm. Those are kind of my practical steps. What are some, what are some things or some habits or or practical steps that you've been taking to to look inside to take that pause um i don't know if necessarily meditation i'd like to get into meditation but just kind of like just being with myself mm. and you kind of learning things about myself or other things i like you know you, you didn't have those i guess those regular worldly distractions where it's like i'm just going to go here i'm just going to do this it's like, <laughs> you know you you spend hours and, and days just with yourself and just figuring out you, man, and the things that you like, and you know, whether it be stepping into things like cooking or other parts of music, you know, diving a little bit more on uh, music theory and things like that, and just stuff I just probably normally wouldn't have done if I was just out in the world, you know, doing the regular. Like just out building your brand as opposed to doing some of the behind the scenes, the non sexy work that tends to make the, the great work out front look better, For is, sure. is what I kind of hear you seeing. On that. Definitely. What are some of the influences for you? Like, what are you what are you listening to? Um, I've actually been listening to a um to some some rock at the moment, man. Just di dabbling in some other uh, some other areas. You know, if you got some yeah. some suggestions, please send them my way. Definitely, uh, man. Yeah, I can. I message you some stuff. Uh, things that I've been listening to. Who? What are some artists in the rock world that you've been listening to? Uh, I've been, songs. Um, Paramore, we listen to a lot of them. Nice. Uh, a lot of them, actually. You know, I just, I, 
Oh, it's been a deep dive of Paramore at <laughs> this moment. Paramore, but um, some Paramore, some Van Halen. Oh, uh, nice. Um, I wanna, I wanna queue up some Queen. Oh man, that's some brilliance. Have you seen their movie? Uh, I haven't. The most yet. recent one. It's a. If you get a chance, I would say even this weekend, if you have some time, watch that movie and then go listen to every one of the song, every one of their songs, because every one of their songs in the movie. But it 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 made their playlists come alive in such a new way because they're brilliant artists. But to see more of the story behind the scenes and what they were writing, how they wrote it, like mm-hmm. man, as an artist, we, me and all my boys sat and watched it and. I was like, oh man, like my oldest son loves rap the most, but I think he was listening to Queen for like a week <laughs> after that. Yeah, and I, I really want to, cause you know, like they have those big anthems and kind of stadium music and you know, I'm big on like performance and, and all of that. So just mm-hmm. kind of, I guess a certain energy like that, like rock concerts and stuff just have. Yeah. And I, I really, I love that, you know, I love that. And so I, I really want to kind of see, you know, what they were bringing. And like I said, the structure of their songs and just how they were doing things, you know, lyrically what they were writing. It's, just, it's good to kind of break away from, you know, your genre and just kind of see some other things. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, 2019, I was in a big push. I released a bunch of acoustic stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I was touring. And I realized looking back on it, I spent the majority of my time actually listening to rap because I was so in that world and writing, I needed something else to inspire me uh, from there. And yeah, it, there was, especially J. Cole uh, and Kendrick Lamar, those were two that, that were in Juice World, uh, which is such a, a sad thing this past year. Like those, those folks, and Kendrick and Juice World, they seem to have a lot of rock undertones and edginess to them j cole has a little bit of that but i don't sense it as much there but yeah yeah. i heard once that i don't know if it's true or not but i heard that sometimes kanye west would have a full band record a song for him and then Mm -hmm. he would go in put his rap he'd rap over it and then take all the band stuff out and put in his production underneath because he just wanted that energy i don't i don't know if that's true or not but it, it makes sense to me I've heard that as well, and I, I like kind of know him. Like I wouldn't put it past him, you know. He's, <laughs> you know type of, like you know, like like you said, like having a whole band is a whole different type of energy than just you know going over the 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 two track in your computer, like right. it's night and day. And and live, it's it's way different than someone rapping over their own vocals, and that's it. You know, it's whole other <laughs> whole other realm. Whole nother realm, a whole nother energy, man. Now, did you grow up with some rock influence as well? Um, kind of like uh, riding with my pops. My pops kind of played everything. So, mm. so obviously there, you know, rap records. Uh, there'd be country records, um, rock records. You know, he whatever he liked is what he played. And so, you know, I was hearing that old soul. I, he's from Detroit, so you know, a bunch of Motown. Nice. Uh, so like I would hear all of that. Um, I said my uh, one of my brothers was a couple of my brothers was just heavy in the you know rap. So I hear a lot from them. One of my brothers was like really rocked with pop music, you know, and, and gospel. So I hear those things from him. So it's just it was everywhere for me, you know. But I mean I've always kind of like you know all the genres. Like there there's there's not really a genre. I'm just like ah that's not it, you know. I feel like I can always find something somewhere, you know. I may right. not like the full spectrum, you know, I may not like, like Screamo or something. But, <laughs> but you might be able to take away a little bit from there. Exactly. That's awesome, man. So what are you dreaming about right now professionally? What's some of those goals on the horizons, the dreams that are driving you right now as you look to 2021? Um, I'd like to really – like establish just a full, a, a real dedicated fan base in the Midwest, just regionally. Um, I think that's that's kind of the next step for me is, you know, being here in KC, you know, picking with what I can, just kind of branching out to to other areas around the region, around the, across the Midwest, and 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 building just a strong following uh, here, man. That's cool. And hopefully, I can you know kind of become just a full time artist. You know, touring and and everything. Once once we get that back, 
Yeah, once once it comes back. I'm man, I'm hoping in my brain, I'm thinking a lot of it is gonna start coming back fall twenty twenty one, just as I listen to different reports, different scientists talking. But again, we don't know. I mean, shit, we thought it was gonna be back this past May, right? Yeah. I remember thinking, Oh yeah, just a few weeks and then boom. And here we are. We're in December right now. I think this is gonna drop in like late January or February, but we're talking mm-hmm. in December and yeah, we're it's an annihilated industry in some regards. I think there's opportunities that have stepped up. Uh, When you think of tours, is there a tour that you're planning? Is there routes or are you just kind of in waiting right now? Uh, I'm more so in waiting. Um, Like I said, the the initial plan was kind of to use this time to branch out to those other cities, you know, because I had just dropped a project at the top of the year. I dropped the EP in March. You know, I had a bunch of shows, you know, in like I was supposed to be Chicago uh, the weekend, the weekend after they shut everything down. Mm. I had three shows in Chicago I was supposed to do. I had shows in Dallas. So, you know, I kind of spend the summer, you know, establishing relationships in all those cities so that I could, you know, be moving around to them. And uh, obviously, you know, everything got shut down. Mm. Uh, So hopefully I can pick that back up. Like you said, whether that's, you know, next year, because I, I, I agree with you. I think it's going to be fall when when kind of everything is, is back to back rolling. Right. Uh, at its normal pace uh, as far as shows go. And we don't feel like we're getting I've done some shows like more outdoor, or like big tent type stuff uh, yeah, here yeah. locally. And the outdoor doesn't feel as scary because it's just a lot of space. Uh, right. there was like enclosed tent where they had like ventilation and everything. Uh, oh, really? that one, I was like, Oh man. And I even started doing some of these interviews in person and then all the numbers started spiking again. Right. I was like, you know what? Let's just all go to zoom. And, oh man, it's, it's been so weird. So, so weird. Um, I, I, I feel, I hear you, man. And there's a lot of people who still just don't believe it and, I just like, ah, who cares? And no mask and my freedom. I'm just like, dude, we yeah. could have done with this. Or, you know, we could have been far past the point we were at. People would just come together. Yeah, I've learned a lot of good things this year. But one thing that I learned that I wish I didn't know was how crazy we are as human beings. Just watching so many people that even I, I know and deal with every day and then come to find out like anti-vax this and like anti-mask and and they have all these strange it's like all these crazy directions of insanity is what i feel like just watching it and i'm like these are all it's not like the fringe like some person i saw on the internet it's like it's this dude or this girl that i know and why why is everyone so fucking crazy (laughs) it's it's wild I, i I feel like, um, like, you know how you always hear those, like you adapt or die and like you look through history and, and see those examples. I feel like 2020 is a case study of that. Like right. this is a case study of, of how people, you either adapt to what's going on or you don't make it, you know, mm-hmm. or how she's, you know, back years ago, either they either adapted to what was happening around them or, you know, you kind of fell by the wayside. Luckily, I mean, obviously this is, you know, this is, a serious thing and you know there are people who are dying luckily it's not super crazy where people are just you know just dropping like anybody who gets it is you yeah know, we would have been fucked at yeah. like yeah. Watch, watching how people are dealing with not as bad i mean it's it's bad i have friends family members who have died from it and who are suffering from it like at this moment uh yeah. but like you said it's not even it's not yeah. even like back in February, I was afraid like, oh shit, like, let me go get my gun. Like people are going to be raiding our house. Like sure. what's, what's about to happen. And, yeah. uh, but even yeah, we would have been fucked. <laughs> even that right there, like that people heard about it and they immediately, cause I mean, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm just like, well, make sure I got my guns, you know, you go to get some ammo and like all the ammo is gone and all the toilet paper is gone. And like <laughs> <laughs> ammo and toilet paper, that's America, baby. Right. And it's just like, <laughs> you know, it's, you it said it's just wild. Like the general public, man, we're not ready for anything serious to go down. Like we wouldn't, yeah. like people can put it out there and say they are, no, we wouldn't be, bro. We, we would lose. This is why we have to have like, like some type of order because 
this is what happened. And people lose their mind, like you said. People thinking, oh, I'm about to get raided, or you know. And there were probably people who thinking, I probably have to raid somebody's houses, like. Right. Desperate man, desperation. It, it it leads people to down a lot of a lot of paths, dog. Yeah, we we started around our house saying uh, a few things this past this past year, and one was you don't have to be fearful. You just have to respect the situation and like try not to live in fear, but got to have a respect of what's going on around you. Uh, yeah. But this other idea of prepare for the worst um, and work for the best, because yeah. I I think it's it's easy to get, you know, I'm going to stockpile my guns and my ammo, and my toilet paper and my food and, and fuck the world. It's like, it, it's easy to just go hard that way. Um, or to pretend there's not a lot of crazy stuff going on and just be super hopeful. It's like, how, how do we prepare for the worst and put ourselves as, as individuals, as a family, uh, the people around us in a good position, but then start working. Like how can we put good things into the world? So that hopefully we don't get to the insanity that it could be, and yeah. like you got to yeah. take the world as it is. I think a lot of people kind of, you know, obviously you want to be optimistic and have hope and you know believe in things, but like it's like, dude, if we're playing basketball. You can't be mad because you got to dribble the ball. Like that's that's just the rules of the game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is the reality of the situation. Like you got to take things for what they are and not what you want them to be. Sometimes, right. I like that. Now, as far as dreams go, um, I love dreaming big uh, professionally. And I think one thing this past year has been good for me. I'm not really, I've never been a dude who's like into hobbies necessarily. I've always been like so focused on work. Um, so I, I started taking up some hobbies and have some dreams for myself personally. Uh, what are there any dreams for you personally, just as, as an individual as as a whole person um you mean like outside of just like musically yeah outside of the music world like for me it's i i've kind of gotten into like uh ultra endurance racing and that kind of stuff um where i have a dream for that or dream just to be for me is another one is just how to how am i more centered and not letting my anxiety get all crazy but just how can i keep everything down almost like a compressor like keep yeah. shit like Boom. <laughs> but I don't know if you have any dreams like that right now for yeah. yourself. So luckily this year I was able to get my foot in like real estate. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I've gotten into that this year and um and it's it's been it's been going very well. So that was that was kind of a big thing. I've been working on that since like twenty eighteen. And so it That's actually awesome, man. Do for me this year. Um so that was a, a good thing. Um I want to be just better, like health wise. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of kind of problems that run in my family, like heart trouble, diabetes, and stuff like that. And I'm just like, you know, I'm 29. You know, you kind of get into those years where you got to pay attention a little bit more to your eating and, you know, physically being active and stuff like that. Like, it's not one of the things where I can just eat Taco Bell every day. <laughs> yeah, I used to be able to eat whatever the hell I wanted as long as I went to the gym every once in a while. And then my warranty ran out on my body. Exactly. So I started doing some real shit. <laughs> so, you know, I, I definitely want to get, you know, ahead of it. And now, right. were, oh, you're at the doctor and like, hey, you got some warning things. Like, no, nah, I want to already be... Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, in the the motion of of doing those things, and I'm kind of pretty active um, anyway. But uh, just just being better about it, especially like eating. I always feel like eating is the hardest part because you know it's just yes. so easy. hit up Burger King, McDonald's real quick, mm. Um, mm -hmm. or um, raising canes, or raising canes. Every you know, time I drive past there, I want that Texas toast. I feel you. I feel you, and it's. You know, just being more disciplined about those things. And then um, I, I uh, actually came back. I used to play baseball when I was a kid. Okay. I was playing probably around my sophomore year of high school. Um, but I just got back into it. Um, so I, I kind of want to, you know, get back back to, to playing baseball again this upcoming summer. Um, nice. There's a I play in. And luckily it's one of them sports where we don't have to be on top of each other. So <laughs> you stay over there. We're yeah. good. This is great. <laughs> Riding over, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not really near anybody. I play in the outfield, so definitely nobody's really near me. And you know, it's, it's something you can you play in the pandemic. So I, uh, like I said, I, I just got back into that, and uh, 
I played. I actually played in a tournament back in October uh, out in Arizona. So nice. So you were doing some some real ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was pretty competitive. Nothing super, super crazy, but just enough. A, just enough, yeah. Just <laughs> way get back out there. Now, uh, one thing I've heard over the last year, year and a half is that rap is the new rock and roll. And that concept really struck me, especially, like I said, 2019 was my year of like, if I was listening to something typically was rap uh, mm -hmm. and the inspiration I found there. Um, what, what does that phrase mean to you? Do you agree with it? If you do, why? If you don't, why? But yeah. Um, I definitely like understand. I think when, when people say rap is the new rock and roll, it's like, you know, at one point, like rock was like the king genre and everybody, you know, you have rock stars, you know what I'm saying? Like the guys, the, the biggest people, everybody who everybody wanted to be like were like the huge rock stars, you know? Right. Um, and so. Van Halen's, right? <laughs> Halen's, you know, and uh, Kurt Cobain's and, you know, all those, those. Mm. Guys, which I love Nirvana, by the way. That's another band. <laughs> you're, you're speaking to my heart, man. That they, yeah. they actually got me into rock music that I didn't yeah. like rock at all when I was younger and it was their unplugged album. They covered a, a meat puppet song, man who sold the world. And I was in like right then it's like sold my soul to rock and roll at that moment. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but, I cut you off though. Sorry. Yeah, no, but I love it. Like just listening to them and even how they, you know, structured their songs and the runs and they're, you know, the verses is all real low key and chill. And then you get to these huge, you know, courses, but yeah, um, you know, like, you know, like you said, you had you had the, the huge rock stars and um, and it's kind of like rap has become that like it's become, you know, the most popular genre, you know, in the world. And there you got you guys like Drake. So like you said, a kindred to Kanye's like everybody's mm. super huge. And, and this is what it's kind of what, um, you know, all the other genres are kind of gravitating to. Even pop music is oh, is yeah. big elements of hip hop. And you got pop people, you know, rapping and which it's. I, I got a super love hate relationship with the popularity of hip hop now. In, in what way? I feel like there are. So I'm I'm super heavy. I've always when people do things, I love people who can do shit that I don't feel like I could ever do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't he's like, you know, like I, like you take a LeBron James. Like I can never be LeBron James. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing the stuff he does, like. I could never be that. So I a whole music. other level. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like that shit's amazing to me because I could, you know, it's it's something I don't feel like I could just do. So I feel like a lot of um, especially, you know, singers, I feel like a lot of singers are dumbing down their talent to mm. kind of mesh in like some of the rap elements. And I'm like, that's cool, but some of you guys can really fucking sing. And mm. you guys stop really fucking singing. You know what I'm I like, see you what you're saying? And I feel like some of you guys are just kind of dumbing your stuff down to like real sing songy stuff that anybody could pick up. Mm. Nah, nah, I want you guys to really, you know what I'm saying? You're you're that talented. Don't dumb down your talent, you know, for some sales. Like, no, nah, like right. go all out. Like Well, and that kind of hits that hits, I think, why the phrase rap is the new rock and roll like connects to me too. Because i I do feel like rock used to be on the edge, like pushing the envelope of social like ideas pushing like when punk came out it was like complete like anti-conformity uh yeah. but but yeah it does seem like rock has become so uh cookie cutter can stuff that just keeps getting pushed out all too often there's some great rock bands still coming out but all too often i feel you that's that's kind of what's happened instead of really saying something where now when in in my mind when i listen to rap and hip-hop there's there's people trying to say something and and truly bring like a fresh perspective to individuals with the idea even some of it you can feel like they want a movement to happen behind it and i feel like rock and roll used to have that uh, but i don't see too many rock bands taking those kind of risks anymore yeah and and that <clears throat> it's it's crazy how it's changed because I would tell people like you got to think about how young you know hip hop is like hip hop came in like with the late seventies mm -hmm. you know talking about a genre that's forty years old 
you know, I mean, you have, they had some previous elements, but like real, just straight out, like this is hip hop, this rap, and like was like the late late seventies, and it's like, it's crazy how much it's grown and how in forty years, you know, this has become like the genre, you know, the world. I mean, America for sure. Like like you said, yeah. all the the artists, biggest artists, you know, they're all they're, they're rappers. And it's, <laughs> wow, yeah, and you can't man. even put out a rock song without some kind of rap element, even if it's just in the uh, music. Like we had one song where the producer called me. He's like, "Hey, check out, check out the bridge," and he put a a, a trap uh, snare drum like in there. And I was like, at first I didn't like it because it was like foreign to me. We, this is a few years back, and then it started growing on me. And eventually, I'm like, "Oh no, I like it." But it was kind of it's in this big bombastic rock song, and then a breakdown with the trap drum. I'm like, okay, right. this is cool. But you see, I see that now everywhere. Yeah, and and it's it's different. I feel like you got a lot more, um, like it's become this this genre with a lot of subgenres now, where you got a lot of guys who, like you said, you you may be doing hip hop, but you got a lot more rock influence in your records, or you know you you got a lot more. You may come out with like an acoustic rap album, or you know you just right. It's wild just how it's changed and evolved into to what it is today. Yeah, it's. I think it's pretty cool. I think overall for the future of music, the bending of genres is inspiring to me because I think even even individual artists don't have to be in this one lane anymore. They be, they can switch and keep moving over. I think artists, honestly, like an artist like Kanye, uh, despite any disagreements people may have with like his own personal life, when you look at his creativity and what he's done, I think he started bending that. And then so many other people have started taking up the reins. And, and now you can get an artist who can do a, a folk song next to a pop song, next to a rap song and, and somehow pull it all off and fans are accepting of it. No, you're exactly right. And that's, that's you know, a lot of what he did because when he was constructing his albums, it would be, I'm gonna go listen to a bunch of non-rap stuff and then bring it to rap, you know, like, you know, he had his first album, which was a lot of soul samples. And then the second album, you know, was all classical influence influence. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, let's do a bunch of classical stuff and then come back here. And then like he had the graduation album, which I think he was on tour with you two. You know, I, I actually went to that. I, w I went to that show in St. Louis, yeah. but the people I was with, they they were running behind. And so we got there right as Kanye ended and we, oh, we yeah. saw you too, but I missed Kanye. And I had no idea who Kanye West was at the time. Right, and, right. and cause I was completely in the rock world. So I was like, oh, we missed this, this guy, Yeah. whoever. And now I look back, I'm like, damn it. You could have seen <laughs> this epic thing. But yeah, he's touring with you too, which I thought was brilliant, especially yeah. looking back on it. Oh, for sure. It's a great move, you know, for him. Cause I like that. That and then leading into the album he made, because he made an album that was way more commercial and, you know, had like a lot of elements from what you 2 did and stadium music you know, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, it just bolstered, you know, him as all like that really took him over the peak. It was like yeah. you're coming and now you, you fully busted through. But yeah, man, like doing stuff like that, because that's, that's something like Kendrick does well, too, is just switch change kind of the genre every yeah. Yeah, you know, every verse he'll switch the. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen? There's this hilarious video where it's like what it's like producing for for uh, Kendrick Lamar, and it's it's a comedian. He's just going back and forth, and he's like, "All right, now on this next line, I want you to put kind of a a, a camel sound with like a spider voice on top." Have you seen this? <laughs> Yes, yes. It's I, I was dying because I'm like, it's so true. It's such amazing music, but it's so true. But I, and I love like like Kendra's a guy I love because it's like he's he's doing stuff that like everybody can't just do, and so you know it makes him stand out. He's so talented, and he he puts so much into his craft. Yeah, yeah, that stuff's amazing. Well, the idea of of the whole podcast is definitely hearing your stories and what what you've been going through as an artist uh, recently, but also diving into the philosophical end, because that's what fascinates me about really humans in general, but I love hearing from artists and entrepreneurs specifically. Um, so this idea live, live and create, 
uh, starting with the first one, for you, what does it mean to you to live a great life? I think uh, living a great life is just whatever your dreams are, your goals, like being able to kind of achieve those. And they don't have to be like, I know the whole you know big thing is like, oh, to be rich and successful. And, and it's just like, I mean, that's all, you know, super subjective, like success for somebody might be not might not be the same, like success for for you might just be being married and having a family. You know what I'm saying? For me, it might be living in the mountains somewhere. And so it's just but being able to 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 do what you want and, and be happy in that and, and, you know, pursue the things you want in life. I think that's that's how you you kind of get there, you know. I dig that. Yeah, especially the idea of define it yourself. Yeah. So for sure. letting outside forces. You're even referencing like it's easy to look at social media and be like, oh shit, I'm not doing that or I'm not doing this instead of am I happy? And it happens to me all the time, especially um like as an artist, because like I said, I'm twenty nine, so you feel social media and just the world in general give you this um give you this viewpoint that like once you're past twenty five you're old and like life is over. <laughs> And it's like, I mean, when you really look up, it's like, dude, you got another like 40, 50, 60 years. Right. Of life live. It's like people are, you're not dying until you're like in your 90s. And it's like, man, I'm 25. You know, I've got way more to go. So like me, I said, I'm 29. And, you know, you, you, you can kind of feel like, oh, I'm past my time. Especially like musically, you know, like, oh, I, mm-hmm. I missed the window, you know. Right. And it's happening. You know what I'm saying? Especially now, like. Dude, you can you can make music forever. You look at some of the people like a Jay Z. It's like Jay Z's a fifty year old man still putting out albums, still putting out records. Even all those old like that's that's really what I love about hip hop now. It's like I was always envious of like the older rock stars who still mm-hmm. got music and still tour and everything. Yeah. They they may not be at their peak anymore, but they still have their core following. They can still make music for those guys and still live off that and and do what they love. It's like I don't I don't have to just stop because I'm not. 23 anymore. Right. No, I feel and I'm, I'm 40. And so I, I definitely, I spent the last, you know, decade kind of wrestling with that, even as at 35, 36 is when our band first really started touring. Uh, yeah. And so that, and it, I felt so silly sometimes sitting in a bar or a club or wherever we were playing and they start talking to me and they're like, like, oh, you have four kids? They're like, damn, how old are you? And I tell them, they're like, why the hell are you here? <laughs> Yeah. And it's like you're in the wrong spot and so it keeps getting reinforced but but even like you're saying this we we live in a new world where you can really grab a hold of the fans that connect with you you don't have to get some record label to convince them like i know i'm old but you know you can still put me out there it's it's yeah. finding the fans that that love who you are and what you're doing yeah and it's like people's stories don't stop in their 20s like life doesn't stop for people in their 20s like rap or writer you know whatever you're doing about what's going on in your life because somebody's going to relate to a 35 year old story because there are a lot of people who are 35 <laughs> you know what i'm saying you're going to be going through the same things as you and it's going to connect with them and like i said it doesn't have to be um you know once you hit a certain age it's over like and that, that same thing happened to me man i, I did a I, I did a performance at ku their uh union fest which is their mm-hmm. their big freshman all coming in and so yeah. i performed here and i'm looking around like i said this was what, last year year before so you know i'm late 20s and i'm looking around I'm looking at all these kids who were like 18 you know fresh <laughs> out of high school coming in <laughs> i'm feeling old as shit, and it's like but it doesn't matter like they're you know, I'm performing and they're rocking with it. And it, it, yeah. it's like stopping and saying, oh, I can't rock with this. He's 29. Like, but, you know, I had those guys who were just like, damn, bro, you, you know, a little bit older. They're like 23, 24. And they <laughs> like, I'm the fucking oldest dude. But I'm just like, <laughs> you know, when you look at the grand scheme, it's, it's you know, age is literally nothing but a number. Like, you you've got right. time. You know, you don't don't fret over that stuff. Like, don't feel like you've missed the window or look around and compare yourself to other people or social media. It's like I said, social media is everybody's perfect life. This is what they want yeah. you to see. You know, that's what you always got to remember. Like, 
Yeah, the perfect family, like you see the pictures with their kids, you didn't see them yelling at two of them to get in the shot right before it and losing their cool in the car on the way there. And all you see is the happy family, like, damn, they're so much better than me, you know? And and I think the thing, you're, the journey you're on too, where you said eating healthier, it's like, I think we understand so much about our bodies where like being, you don't have to like, I guess, get old in a sense, like physically we are changing in general, but we can take care of ourselves and still be youthful. And I think part of it, maybe more, maybe almost all of it is mindset and how you see things. And cause I know there's uh, my, my last band run with it, our first drummer, I think he was 50 when he started drumming with us, but man, even to the, and it's been years now since he's been in the band, but even seeing him online, like this dude is still just so youthful because he just has this mindset of youthfulness. He takes care of himself and he's always cracking jokes and trying to have fun and trying to lift people up. And I, I would always forget he was as old as he was. Like sometimes he would, t- it would something would come up where he would tell me, and I'm like, oh shit, yeah, you are. But I don't think of you that way because he was such a youthful, vibrant personality. For sure. And, and like you said, mindset is a huge and I'm I'm high on whatever you think is what will be. Like if you think yeah. I'm old and I can't do all these things, you're you're gonna you're gonna do those. You're gonna have those actions like involuntarily. Like you're not gonna think about it, but you're just gonna start acting that way because that's what you think in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you, I'm I'm still youthful, I still have life. So you're gonna act like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're gonna believe, and and that's how you're gonna move. Absolutely. It's that self-fulfilling prophecy in a sense, or even down, I heard it explained where, you know, if you're looking for a car, like for a while, I wanted to buy a truck. Like I love those Dodge Ram, like 2,500, four by four, you know, whatever. And, uh, I haven't got one yet. I, I drive a Ford Fiesta right now. Cause it's good on gas, but, <laughs> but everywhere I went, I saw Dodge Ram 2,500, four by fours everywhere. Right. And I noticed, and I started, I could tell the difference between the different modifications and cause that's all I was focused on and, and thinking about and looking at, I was looking at ads, looking at this, looking at specs. And, yeah. and I think it's the same thing. Like what, whatever we're, we're focused on. I, I don't think it's necessarily like, personally, I don't think it's like a metaphysical thing, but I think it's, it's kind of where your focus is. That's where you're going to start moving. In general. We're always there. It's like, all of a sudden you started thinking about it and they just started magically right everybody. like did everyone go buy a dodge ram at that point no yeah no because the same thing happened with me because i um I, I drive a jeep i drive a grand cherokee mm-hmm. and at the point i wanted grand cherokee before i actually got it was <laughs> damn everybody has a fucking grand cherokee everybody <laughs> has a wrangler like, everybody's got a jeep and it's just like no nah, the jeeps are always there i just wasn't focused on them right and now for us, like just focusing on uh, the right mindset and that success as we define it. Uh, when you think about creating great things, obviously you're, you're spending so much time in creation, learn so much. Um, what would you say to you right now? What does it mean to create great things? Um, you know, I've, um, that's something I've kind of been like mulling over in this quarantine because I've, I've struggled like with myself creatively, um, letting outside influence get into what I'm trying to do. Or like I said, when I talk about those age things, that's just kind of something I've been struggling with and trying to, you know, match up with things or, you know, maybe I'm, I'm leaning into what's popular, you know, trying to put myself, get to where I want to be. Um, but I, I think, to answer that question, it's doing what fulfills you, you know, because you have those people who they, they do what they do just because they love to do it. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to be like, they might not even want to sustain their life off this. You know, you, you, they have a person like that just does like pottery because they love to do pottery because it's therapy. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like the passion. Exactly. And it's, for me, it's been, trying to get back to that you know because there was a point in my life where I was just I was just strictly making music because I love to do what I just enjoyed like I was never thinking of like as this has to be my life or you know I have to make you know a living off this it was just like hey I'm just trying to 
do this because I enjoy it. It's like I enjoy it. It's like therapy. You know what I'm saying? It's like a way for me to get it out my thoughts or, you know, create this world or, you know, this this image or just, like you said, just create in general. And so for me, it's getting back to that. But I, I think just creating things that just fulfill your your thoughts or, you know, whether whatever that is, expressing them or, or just making up stories or just just making something, man. No, I feel you on that too. The, the wrestling of it. I'm getting ready to go as I've been. I've been creating systems for this podcast so that they can just keep firing away each week. Um, it really to open up this next season. I plan on spending a good three, four months of just writing for the next album uh, for myself, uh, which yeah. probably won't come out till 2022. But I want to get all the ducks in the row. Right. Uh, but but I feel you on that of of wrestling with with creating for the love and the passion because it's like i keep going to i open up logic start writing but i'm not liking it's like i'm chasing something that's not making me happy right now and so I, i'm trying to dig down and, and understand that I, I like that idea of fulfillment um where it honestly this past year i i, I stepped off my last tour end of 2019 and I decided I was going to go into a whole other world. I went into the landscaping world, was contemplating maybe buying a land part of a landscaping business. Uh, it was kind of this idea because uh, I just want to make money. I was, you know, the the musician struggle of not always making money, <laughs> and I was like, I'm I'm tired of it. But after a good six seven months of really digging into it, I realized I didn't care how much money I made. I hated it, and it really? wasn't fulfilling and. And then now even hearing you talk makes me think down to creativity. Like if it's not fulfilling you, you're just not going to be happy in the end. And I think maybe that's where, I know that's where I get tripped up. Maybe that's where some of the artists who have great runs and then disappear, maybe that's where they go. I don't know. Yeah. And it's funny. I've been watching a, um, I've been watching a a Andre 3000 interview. Um, he did an interview with Rick Rubin and, Mm -hmm. uh, I have to go check that out. Yeah, yeah, that it would was, be amazing. It was really good, but I really listening to to Andre talk. I felt like that's where he was, and like he was hinting at that. It he was he was pitting himself against himself and his past. What he did, you know, back in them because you're outcast and like you know you <laughs> made elevator some brilliant shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and he was he was, I, I think he was putting that on himself like. And he was talking about you know how he'd like sit down and try to make music and things weren't like he felt like all his melodies were trash and all his direction was trash and i really think it's it's the pressure of, oh i've got to live up to this and other people's expectations and and you know who i used to be and it's just like looking at that like, no man you just got to fulfill yourself and like what do you enjoy and it's just like at the end of the day this project or whatever is successful if i like it yeah that's i i need to check that out with rick rubin that'd be a legit podcast man yeah yeah he because he actually does it he and he he's got a kendrick interview he's got a few like he, he has a whole podcast okay. yeah so it's, it's pretty good i'm gonna go check that out that'll be i i heard john legend do you know gary v yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so gary v i my wife jokes how he's my Lord and savior. Cause I talk about him so much, but uh, like, he had, <laughs> what, what's that? I like Gary V's energy. Like I, I, it, I feel like you get some of those guys who are like motivational speakers and they just kind of feed him. Like, uh, Be positive. Get out there and go. He's like, like shut the like, fuck up and start working. <laughs> I'm like, I like that. <laughs> you're going to do this or you're not. Like, mm-hmm. But he was interviewing John Legend and they were talking about that same concept um, mm. where he wrote all of you or all of me is the big one. And he was just talking to, he's like, I had to come to a place to accept that one, I didn't make that happen. I wrote the song, but I had no control over how big it got. Um, right. And he said, and I had to come to a place to accept that I may never in my entire life write a song that gets that big. And it sounded like, him accepting those two things were a way that he could continue to make art and to continue to play and to continue to progress. And it, 
it's a huge moment when you think yeah. about it. Like, like you said, the chase, bro. The chase is like that. That the chase will get you fucked up, man. Like, <laughs> firstly, I, I think obviously I've I've never done anything that big, but just imagining you know artists right. getting that, making that, and like it's like oh I've got to I've got to get back to that. I've got to do that again, and it's like yeah. you can you can basically you know make yourself so unhappy and just just mm. end off of yourself trying to chase what you used to be or the ghost of yourself and it's like nah man just create put it out there do what you do as long as you're happy with it i like that that's it's encouraging uh to hear just even have this conversation as i even myself going into this next round of creativity and writing um i think in in a sense maybe not like i've had a massive hit it's just i i have all these things bounce around in my head of what things need to be as opposed to letting them become what it should be maybe is the is the thought so oh one band that sticks out to me you're talking about uh suggestions there's a band called ajr are you familiar with them uh -huh. yeah check them out it's ajr i'll send you a link as well um, i think they're doing some of the most interesting writing they have some phenomenal production and it's funny he actually has a song in there where he's a singer and he's talking about how the whole song is about how he wishes he was a rapper and but really? how everyone would laugh at him if he tried and all the reasons why he thinks uh he he just they they have some crazy songs like they have a song all about the office like the show the office really? and, but and i'm not shitting you you'll probably cry by the end of it i don't know how they did it but they made it so emotional <laughs> yeah it's great stuff but man mm -hmm. thank you for the time i do appreciate it oh sorry go ahead Oh, I was just saying I appreciate like like creative writing like that, like you know, just kind of stepping outside yourself. And if you write a show about the office, it's like this isn't made to be a hit. Like I'm just there's just some crazy <laughs> stuff I thought of that I'm just gonna put down and I'm just gonna do. Exactly, man. Yeah, check him out, and I'll once I get off, I'll send you a link as well. But dude, thanks for making the time. I appreciate it, and. uh yeah. Thank you for listening to the Live and Create podcast. If you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment or a review. The Live and Create podcast.